There you go. We're live. Hey, everybody. It's the Gerard Eye Podcast. I'm Allie, and here's your host, DJ Kaufman. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, asked her, I asked her to kick this off. I was like, why don't you introduce this tonight? So, um, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Where's the uh, screen with the little 12 on it? All right. There we go. So, yeah, tonight on the episode 12 of the Draw or Die podcast, we're going to talk about the future of comics. I'm pretty fired up. I've seen a lot of stuff this week. We're going to get right into it with a news roundup of some of the uh, top news that's going around around the art scene, AI art update. Uh, don't want to spoil all that. We're just going to get right into it for that. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty fired up for the, uh, the future of comics. Kind of, we're going to go through this whole freaking, I got a, an essay here. So you, you know, this is retention value now. You can't read that yet, but I'm going to get there. And then I got a whole other screen to share. Like, look at this. I got, I got this, I got this, I got a whole other screen to go through. So, you know, you're going to have to hang around, hang in there and watch uh, what we're up to tonight. And uh, by the way, if you're liking this podcast, you're an artist of any kind, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel. It helps us find more artists like you. Hopefully you're an artist. If you're not, hey, maybe you will be. Um, real quick plug, 28 days. February is the drawing prompts. 28 days in a row. I'm going to be live here on the YouTube channel from 8 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to probably be using the uh, Opus software here. We're checking out. Uh, if, you're, if you're listening live, in a little bit, we'll have some emoji rain and some, do some fun while, we're, while I'm talking, while I'm ranting. And, uh, you know, no more sad DJ. You're not going to get sad. Uh, DJ, you're going to get fire in the belly, DJ. I'm fired up tonight. I want to talk about this uh, uh, passionate stuff for creators and uh, get you kind of motivated and going. So we'll get there in a second. Look, there's a Dr. Evil. Look at that. I drew that. That's a pretty good Dr. Evil, right, Alicia? Yeah, I mean. I drew that with no reference. <laughs> proud, proud of myself. How many, how many times have you seen that movie? Uh, quite, quite a bit. All right, so. Why don't you kick off with the first segment about this? Uh, so this week in AI news, I figure I feel like we talk about this more than anything else. Uh, there is an official class action lawsuit uh, brought against uh, quite a few of the AI art companies using the stable diffusion technique. So this is going to affect Midjourney and a few other. Um, companies that are using that that technology that was created by open sourcing artists work without their permission uh if you haven't seen it yet this article is fire uh dj <sighs> what's what's the web address on this it's this, sta uh, uh stable diffusion litigation dot com <laughs> yeah um and this this uh okay. they kind of found the the best possible person that that could kind of push this forward um, Matthew Butterick, he's a writer, designer, programmer, and a lawyer. Uh, and on behalf of, I think there's three plaintiffs now, uh, three, three women, fantasy artists, I think, uh, are, are going to sue the pants off <laughs> <laughs> these people for stealing their art. Um, and if, if you want the Cliff Notes version of this article, my favorite part uh, is that he calls it a 21st century collage tool um and uh, i just think that's probably pretty insulting <laughs> to <laughs> to the creators of these programs but very 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 accurate um so yeah if you haven't checked out that article it's a, a good one to kind of get you up to speed on how these programs work um they they talk about introducing text prompting as a form of magical misdirection to make it seem like oh, yeah. it's not sourcing images. Um, but yeah, check it out. And uh, I know we'll be watching this one closely. Yeah. And if you know, you just want to tune in to us on Thursdays at eight o'clock Eastern time, we'll, we'll keep you up to date. Yeah. It's definitely in this ongoing saga. You know, we called this back in, October, or November, when we first started talking about this in one of the early on podcasts, I'm like, dude, lawyers are going to get involved here. Lawyers are going to come and 
Yeah, there's some fire quotes in here about how this is a 20 yeah. look a 21st century collage tool like yeah said. the the other thing um about this article that i loved was they mentioned the isabella stewart gardner museum heist which oh. if you're unfamiliar with it it's the biggest art heist uh in north american history i don't know if it's in world history um but they said you know that the value of those paintings and the scale of the theft needed to create these AI art tools. Um, I mean, we're looking at billions of dollars in damages um, for a theft because that's what it is. It's theft. So I just want to get your opinion, Alicia. You know, I did this really quickly at like 5 a.m. in the morning. Um, did I capture Matthew Butterick's likeness here? I think Matthew would approve. I, okay. I think. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tag him and tell him to come in at this timestamp and, and approve his, of his uh, character. <laughs> Uh, here. So again, everybody, uh, make sure you're doing likeness drawings and learning how to capture a quick li likeness. So it's a quick way to make a buck with uh, your cartooning. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not going to spend much more time there, except that they are seeking like $5 billion or something. So I drew uh, um, uh, Dr. Evil here, and I'm pretty, pr pretty proud that I drew this just from my memory of how uh <laughs> of how dr eva looks so that's another cool thing about you know hey drawing every day if you're absorbing stuff you learn how to draw something and if someone's like dj draw dr evil i could jam on a whiteboard or something like that and it seems like magic so what's this uh, weird crew says if they win this lawsuit will these ai programs stop using our art well we're gonna have to get matthew butterick this fella uh right here on the on the uh, podcast to find out that's what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna alicia's gonna go after and try and find some guests uh, to bring I am. On. yeah yeah that's your job now um <laughs> so uh yeah we're not gonna spend too much time with the ar thing because man i'm just sick of it like it's you know it's a it's a yeah whatever you know my opinions on it you can read uh read what's going on uh or listen to what's going on on the, the previous podcast. I don't think it's bad. I just think there's some ethics problems here. They got to figure this out quick because Matthew Butterick is coming for their uh, bank. So, yeah. All right. There, cool. there might yeah. also be implications for DeviantArt uh, for mm -hmm. violating their own terms of service. So That's crazy. we'll keep an eye on that. You know, the feeling I got when I was reading through some of the comments from the tech bros was mm -hmm. like, these CEOs, <laughs> CEOs or whatever they call themselves. They're like, are there rules? Hmm. Like they think that like the world is going to change for them because they got some cool chat GPT tools and stuff like that. But there are laws to protect creatives and, you know, justice is slow, but you guys best figure out your, you got to figure out your ethics with this AI stuff. You can have these tools. They could be good. They could, they could be a good thing. But you can't do it the wrong way. You can't screw over artists because we ain't going to take it. I'm not going to take it anymore. All right. Cool. Um, all right. Next segment. Um, another thing I noticed uh, just today or maybe yesterday was the uh, layoffs at Amazon, which affected heavily uh, comiXology. So I also pulled up. Let's see. I just pulled, you know, I just pulled up a Google, Google search. I'm not really, you know, this isn't a fancy uh, research tool here. It's Google search. And. You know, but it did affect uh, a lot of comicsology. So there's a lot of Twitter uh, vibing about this. And, you know, I've got mixed feelings about comicsology and digital comics and all of that stuff. And we're going to kind of get into that in the next big segment where I rant about the future of comics and all that stuff here uh, in a minute. Um, hey, Tom, uh, thanks for joining the uh, stream tonight, the podcast. Um yeah, major layoffs reported across across all of these companies. We've also heard from, and I, I can't, you know, I can't say the names or whatever, but I've heard from multiple professional comic artists that we know, very high, you know, I think some some high level people I would consider uh, that their checks have been late. You know, there's a cash flow problem. These publishers aren't paying the creators. You know, the creators always get paid last. It's a major problem. And then on the other flip side, I go to, uh, and I called it belly aching, but I don't mean to insult anybody. I know it sucks when you don't get paid. I've been there, been on that flip side of that. I've been on the flip side of not having work lined up too on the freelance side. And that sucks. That could be a scary uh, kind of feeling. Um, we're going to get into that in a minute. 
about what you can do about that. And uh, yeah, publishers are going belly up, cash flow problems. Um, and creator, the, the thing about comiXology that bothers me is like, I feel bad for the people that lost their jobs. Definitely. Because a lot of them, one of the, one of the vibes from one of the guys, and I honestly, I don't have his name pulled up. It's on Twitter. It's been shared around, um, is that they really loved their job working at comiXology. They never complained about it. They really loved working there. They were working in comics kind of like. They just loved comics. They loved the medium. They were readers and they were fans. And so that's awesome. Um, uh, yeah. So, but the thing is on the flip side, Alicia, you remember we've had conversations where we were behind the scenes at comic in comic cons and, and, and after parties with how much money are you actually making on comiXology as a creator? Like we were actually on, we had, we had something on there, right? We had God shout on there through, I think for a hot minute and then the caliber thing happened and and they're like you made 25 cents and i don't think we ever got that 25 cents we never got a check no. from anyone it was just no we we got some checks from keen spot keen spot was, was fine yeah was fine with sending things but um, yeah i think there was that was during like the red giant integration and and that felt weird and we just we didn't we didn't yeah, go ahead yeah. with that we won't get into all that. It's just that I, I know I've talked to some higher, I don't consider myself anybody on this totem pole, to be honest with you, but I do talk to a lot of other creators and I'm like, oh, how much are you making on Comixology? And they roll their eyes and go like, oh, we never made anything. So who's making the money? The publishers, Amazon, who, who made the money for the top selling Comixology books? It wasn't the creators. So that's another uh, segue into this next uh uh, rant about uh, the comic industry. Um, Comicsology being a tech company, I think every tech company right now is kind of taking advantage of this recession climate yeah. uh, to make cuts. And and even sure. even if they don't need to make cuts, I'm sure there are shareholders, uh, investors, just like so many other businesses that kind of see this as an opportunity. <clears throat> to kind of shave that bottom line. And that's really sad, especially in, in a creative space like this. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to be too much of a downer, but um, yeah. Uh, Tombo mentioned Jason Pearson's passing this week. Uh, Jason Pearson was a fabulous artist, um, but probably also a good, um, a good uh, example of, I think he was 51. I don't know, maybe 50 or something like pretty young to die of a heart attack. Um, I think, I think that's how he passed. But anyways, uh, you know, in, in, in recent times he'd gotten into some controversy because like these companies just move on from you. They, they just move on from you. Uh, we know a couple other old timey uh, cartoonists. I just don't want to say their names unless they want me to, but they definitely feel like when they're, when their time is up, they're cast out. And the new young hot freshness comes in because they don't want to, to to pay the names anymore. So I feel like to me, looking at that from the outside perspective, I met Jason Pearson like a couple times at shows, great artist. That's where he kind of fell in. He was such a great artist, but he deserved more. But these companies are not willing to, to take care of the creators. As a matter of fact, um, they don't want to build you up as a brand, you personally. So I believe that... Um, uh, Jason probably got that frustration. We see that happen to artists where they're young and they're like excited and they're on the cover of wizard. And then the, the industry just kind of grinds them down until they're they're It's a numbers game. You know, they need the new, uh, the new hotness and it's hard to keep up with. So it kind of creates this bitterness. That's why I always say, stay encouraged by the way, is because I had a friend that used to sign his letters, be encouraged and, in his older years before he passed, he uh, got really bitter about everything. And I'm like, dude, you used to be the most encouraging bro. And now you're jaded. And I didn't like that. And I was like, I don't want to become that. I don't want that to be my future. Right. That's kind of how I always look at these, um, you know, the belly aching and stuff like that, that goes on out there. But um, <clears throat> that kind of leads us into the, the meaty part of tonight's um, podcast. And it's basically, I'm calling it the future of comics, right? Um, and I look to the past. 
So there's a very interesting, you might've heard these theories about um, there's like the fourth turning and all this political stuff about how wars and all this stuff, but it is interesting. It's very interesting to, to look at and see the, the parallels between what, what happened in the previous generations that we may have forgotten about and how we are, how we can move forward by learning from the past. So in order to do that, we need to go back to 1923. We're just gonna jump right into this, this uh, rant here. <laughs> um, 1923, post-pandemic, post-World War, um, and people are seeking escape from all of the heaviness, all that stuff that's going on in the world in 1920s. People are going crazy. It's the Roaring Twenties. They're partying, you know, all that stuff. That's why they called it like the Roaring Twenties, right? Well, for other reasons too, but uh, uh-oh, what did I do? I just... Deleted my whole okay. There that's the end of the Gerard I part. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> <a bit> over. <laughs> um, I did it again. What am I doing? I'm doing some hand motion gesture. I need to watch my own gesture videos here. Um, oh man, I just totally jacked this up. Oh come on, I got to stop touching this so much. All right, let's get under here. I'm going to use two fingers and not touch with my other hand. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the attention common uh, economy, the attention economy, where are the eyeballs? And in the eyeballs in the 1920s was in the daily newspapers. And we had the railroads that were kicking off. People were traveling, getting out of their city. But the daily newspaper was the place where all the eyeballs were. And if you contrast that to where we are now, 2023, we're post-pandemic. We got some war stuff that people were just like, ugh. Okay, yeah, why can't we just be peaceful, right? People are seeking escape from those dark things. A lot of people had deaths in their families. A lot of people dealt with this heaviness of being trapped in their house for a few years. And where's the attention economy in 2023? So the attention economy is right here on your phone. And you're on it more than just once a day, multiple times daily, hourly. So, you know, the companies are battling over content behind the scenes, YouTube. TikTok, Instagram, they're battling over creators, they're battling over features, exclusive deals, it all sounds very familiar because 100 years ago, newspapers were doing that. <clears throat> newspapers were battling over uh, features in the newspaper. Features, crossword puzzles, mazes, all that crazy stuff. I wish I would have had time to actually show. Maybe I'll do that in future episodes where I'll just like pull some stuff out because I got a subscription to newspapers.com where I can go back and look 100 years at what was actually being drawn in the newspapers, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the daily newspaper was their jam. Newspapers fought to get certain cartoonists because people were like, I'm only buying this paper for five cents or whatever because I like this guy's art is in it or this feature is in it or the crossword puzzle. So it wasn't just about the, the doom and gloom news. People were looking for escape. And now they do that on their phones. Back then, and I think I had the word cartoonist here written out, but whatever, it happened to it. Um, back then, cartoonists were the top of the game. Like, honestly, cartoonists were invited to the White House often. They were invited to uh, Hollywood premieres. Cartoonists wore suits uh, <laughs> when they worked, when they sat at their desk. They took their jobs very seriously. Here we have, this is Rube Goldberg. This is Alex Raymond. Uh, died in a mysterious uh, car crash, maybe. Um, and this is Milton Kniff. So these were the top guys of the 30s and 40s. Uh, but in the 20s, it was still kicking off. This whole thing with cartooning was really... Um, blowing up uh yeah probably the yellow kid part of the editorial content then yes the yellow kid tom uh some of the comics at that time you know i'm no historian either but we're talking um little orphan annie uh gasoline alley gasoline alley came out and they were all comics that weren't gag strips as gasoline alley was about a small town called gasoline alley that was similar to small towns right around here where i live and you got to know the local characters and all that stuff uh, and you rooted for them every day and stuff like that so anyways it, 
Um, my point is that they were the influencers of the time, the cartoonists. People were looking and sending fan mail, and it was insane. And these dudes were making bags. They were making serious bags. I saw a couple articles where they said the equivalent of the salary that they made for doing a daily strip in the syndicate was about 150 k And that was just for like a low-level dude. Like, I, I don't know the names of the comics off my top of my head, but it wasn't like Milton, Alex, and Rube. Like, um, yeah, Prince Valiant. I mean, they, they just go on and on, right? Just look up 1920s comics, 1930s. You'll find them, right? hundred years ago. But something happened there. Um, and by the way, that's them. And this is now. Now cartoonists are broke as AF and will draw for food and barely a profession and belly aching online all the time about i don't have work oh i don't have work lined up oh, all these publishers and whatever how do we get from this to that right how do we get from hollywood premieres and cartoonists being the influencers of their time to uh you know we'll draw for food by the way that's that could be me any day now alicia so i could be you know there's my flannel and my weird, my weird beard. All right. Um, the reason this happened was the syndicates, like I said, were battling over features. And they didn't remember what people wanted. People wanted the escape. Cartoonists forgot that too, because they would just sign exclusive deals. They would get their money. And little by little, the syndicates and the corporations and the publishers kept the power and creators just kept getting wrecked. That's a good word to use. Wrecked instead of the F word. Right, Alicia? Yeah. I mean, it fits. Wrecked. So Dylan says, my son says it a lot. So now it's stuck in my head. So yeah, creators would get wrecked. And it just has always felt wrong. And somewhere along that line, everybody forgot what was the actual job to be done. They forgot what the job to be done was, was all the way back up here. You know, people were, people were seeking escape and now they do that just by thumb scrolling on their, you know, just mindless, mindless. And they still got you like the companies, the, the, these apps, these influencers that aren't really creators, like they don't actually create much with their hands or, you know. They're just like putting up shampoo and be like, I'm pretty, look at me, and I can sell some things. Uh, great. But somehow artists that actually can do this, musicians, artists, writers, are all broke, right? So it's a very frustrating. That's the frustrating part. But we're going to get to the – I'm going to give you a recipe here in a minute because it's wrong. Like this is wrong. Unfortunately, cartoonists never really evolved cartoonist that I talked to just last week, a guy messaged me and said, I'm a, I'm a, is there any hope for us old school comic strip guys is what he said. Uh, and I said, yeah, of course. Oh my gosh. There's so much you can do right now. You could do it right now. And there's a recipe that you can do. And I'm going to show you that recipe right now. And this, this, this requires me to uh, change my screen. But if you're digging this, make sure you like this channel so that more cartoonists can find this because this is a siren. This is a siren call to uh, creators out there. Um, let's switch the screen. Go like that. And then I'm going to go like this. All right. So here's the recipe. This is the future of comics recipe for you. Now, if you don't do comics, okay, cool. That's fine. But you should still listen to this because it doesn't have to be about comics. As a matter of fact, I might show you a little bit about what I'm doing because I think I need to do, to do part of this too. Um, and Alicia is here. She said, you should just rant all night by yourself. And I'm like, no, I think it's important that she's here because she can read the comments and moderate me if I get too crazy. Right. But Good luck with that. Good luck me. But also, it's nice to have she she gets to sit here and listen to my crazy ideas and kind of moderate, and I really trust her judgment with this. 
So she thinks I mean daily comic strips. And she's like, dude, you're crazy. And I'm like, I no, that's not what I mean. So I want to talk, talk this through. And Alicia, at any moment, if you have an opinion, just interrupt me and say, well, what about this? Because you might, you might add to this and make this an even better idea. So here's the future of comics recipe. You, Gary, Tom, the other 12 people listening right now, you're going to develop a four panel comic strip. Okay. And that's because it's less time consuming to do actually four panels Four. I'm not saying daily, I'm not saying daily. We'll get there. So pause Alicia. Do not stop these people from doing this yet. <laughs> um, but it's building blocks. Think of those four panels as building blocks. And I actually pulled up a Terry and the pirates and this one's in Spanish uh, just because, but you can see that these panels are square, right? Square square and there's a lot of talking heads in this action right this is an old uh, this comic terry and the pirates actually um inspired most of the uh modern comics that we see today people go oh terry and the pirates or all that right they always they always cue that up as, as something it's a little bit, very good art for milton Kniff. a lot of good contrast here i can look at this stuff all day and i won't but you see how the story's progressing, right? Block, block, block. And it's great for me because I don't read Spanish. So I don't know what this is saying, but I can see that the story is progressing through pictures because comics is a visual uh, storytelling medium. Okay. It's not start a script panel, page one, panel one. Blah, 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 blah. I got an 80 page script and no drawings. Let's forget that. Throw that out the window. Let's think visual for a minute. So that's what the kind of think, thinking you're going to need to do, okay? And yes, your story and your characters need to be compelling and you need to learn this craft. And you might not be there yet. Your artwork might not be good enough. And that's okay because I got, it's fine. We're going to get there. But you might be an old pro that you've been doing this a while. I know a few. You know, I'm looking at you, Ernie Steiner. Looking at you, Ernie, um, even if your eyes are weak and you know, but your heart is strong, Ernie, I know because I've talked to Ernie. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with saying Ernie's name, Alicia. He would laugh. Uh, but I know Ernie could bust out what I'm about to, what I'm about to talk about right now. So, so if you're an old pro and you got this, then cool. Listen up because I'm going to show you the future for where you're stuck and where your heart needs to go. And. If you don't know yet, you still got to do the next step. Okay. Here, well, let's, I'm going to break here because Weird Crew says, what makes your story and characters compelling? And that's probably a whole other topic, uh, a whole other podcast or maybe workshop that we do live or something, because that's a, that's hard to say. Look at the things that you like and think about why you like it. Why do you like the characters you're watching on TV? What makes you, what makes them compelling to you, right? And then think about your own ideas. So that's just my, that's such a deeper, deeper thing that we cannot solve. Uh, and maybe I've never solved. Maybe my comic characters aren't good enough either, you know? So both, both things lead to the same thing. You need to document your process. Okay. And it's easier now more than ever to do this. We're doing this right now with very little stuff. I got a laptop. Yeah, I got a fancy microphone here now. So I sound better. I got a laptop. I got some stuff. We got a webcam, you know, if I didn't but have all you need, all you need is your phone. All you need is your phone. That's all you need. You already got it. Everyone's got a phone. I think, you know, maybe, maybe a little tripod. It's a little frustrating to try to prop it up with a kickstand. You take your phone. You use what you got. A little one of these. Yeah, look at that cheap thing. It's an Amazon, yeah. twelve bucks or something. You know, and if you don't have the things, don't let that stop you from documenting your process. You, if you don't have it, don't be like, well, when I get that, da 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 da. da. No, you start where you are. If you have a computer or if you have a phone and you could just point a picture at the thing you're drawing, document your process. Start where you are. So that's going to look like this. You're going to learn to live stream everything. And we're talking everything. 
That means the process that you're drawing when you're drawing pencils, inks, all that stuff. Okay. We're talking character design. So weird, new, weird crew. Uh, you don't know what your characters are yet. Well, guess what? You're going to do that live somewhere. Even if there's three people watching, right? We'll get to that in a minute. Even if you have three people watching, don't, don't even think about the people that are watching. I got 12 people watching this live podcast right now. I sent this out to a community of 1800. You know, I don't expect people to show up live and watch this live. I don't care because I know they can watch it. Maybe we got a storm going on outside. So if we, yeah, I, I, this... I kept thinking about saying something, if we drop out, we're okay. Uh, but there's a, a kind of flash thunderstorm running through Westmoreland County right now. <laughs> I feel like it's my energy. It's like I'm pulling this energy down. I'm just like, I'm bringing the thunder, Alicia, tonight. I so wanted to doing? say, you know, I think that we're all consumers of content and you know the content that you like. And yeah. it's a good chance that the people that are going to be interested in your com comic, they like the same kind of content that you do. So, That's you know, right. you've seen someone kind of prepping their coffee and sitting down with their their tools and you know you know this content because you consume right. this content um so it, it shouldn't be mysterious to you how to make something that's interesting because you're a storyteller you know you're an artist right um so it's, it's just documenting those moments and kind of getting inspired by the things that you see as you create as you consume content yeah so I wrote down G.I. Joe here because when I really went back into my own mind about the types of comics that I make, Secret Forces, all that stuff, Hero by Night, it was always like, in a weird way, G.I. Joe, right? It was always that. I didn't even know who made G.I. Joe when I liked it. I didn't know it was Larry Hama or, or whatever, or Marvel or anything like that. I didn't know anything about that. I was just like, I like this. This is cool. And that's just stuck with me my entire life. And so my comics are kind of like that. I like the action adventure stuff. So I know that people that like GI Joe are going to like my comics. Your audience is not other artists. So we're here on this stream and you're probably an artist or a creative of some kind. Cool. This is the place for you to be because we're going to talk about these things. You need to talk about them with other creators. But when you're out there pitching your comic, you don't want to be showing other comic artists. So when you're an artist alley or when you're, you know, you might get some, yeah, you know, you might get the walkthrough traffic of people that like supernatural or whatever pop culture BS is going on out there, but they're not there to see you. So you're competing against all these big things. So that's not really, that's why comic cons are just kind of like, eh. okay, but you, here we are on the internet. You have the capability to reach billions of eyeballs right now, more than any newspaper ever was in the 1920s. Think about that. And why, you know, just think about that, absorb that. Um, meditate on that every day go like, damn, I, billions of people could see my art today. Maybe if I break through, but not other artists, they don't care. Like they don't, they don't want to be, they don't want to see your art. They want to make their stuff going. Right. So you're going to live stream everything. And I'm talking character design. I'm talking writing in the Marvel method. And when I say that, we'll talk about that in a minute, what that means. If you don't know, um, but all the steps have to be live. And the thing that I always see when people do this stuff when they try, they never go, I've never seen anyone go 100% ever on this. And the thing that holds them back is they say, oh, you know, I'm going to spoiler that I don't want to show you this thing because it's a secret for what's coming up next. F that. Forget to be that. fair, you, you say that too. So. I know. I'm saying yeah. that because I know I'm, I'm making the same mistake. I know it, right? I'm like, I don't want to show you what's another screen underneath this screen in my Procreate because I've been working on something for two months. And I'm like, I can't show this until it's ready. It's like an artist mindset thing. Someone's going to steal my idea. Forget all that, right? Um, don't worry about that. This is not about that. You're taking people, whoever's watching you live or, or like interested enough to watch an hour stream of you, you're taking them into that deep work that work in progress and they, and we're going to talk about the wins here in a minute and why this matters, especially if you're starting from zero, it's even better that you're starting from zero weird crew. It's awesome that you don't know yet, right? Like you're going to be able to document that whole entire, I don't know. Like 
here's my new characters. What do you guys, or what I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm gonna work on this again tomorrow night. Right. Um, and that's the optional, I, the optional thing that you could be doing. If you have five fans, two people, you can ideate with your fans live directly. Um, if you wanted to, if you really, if you were really into a feature thing, like if you're Milton Kniff, a modern Milton Kniff, and you're on there working on your story ideas and sketching out the things, you might get to a point where you're like, should the guys go into this volcano or should they fight the robots on the beach? Right. And then your fans are going to go, but the, oh, well, I think they should, fight. you should make them do both fight the robots on the Like plotting it out live could be a lot of fun <clears throat> and also teach people. to get in that mode of thinking of story ideation and having fun. And it's like, to me, it feels like playing with toys. Like when you were a kid, you're making up stories and whatever. I don't know if everybody, everybody did that, but I did. Um, and it's just fun and it's an escape. And remember the job to be done is people want to escape. They don't want to flip on and see what the freaking Card Kardashians are doing. Brad Pitt. Blah, politics. You're on here talking about adventure guys. Uh, they're infiltrating a volcano base of a bad guy. You know, I don't know. Right? Fun. Escape. You're helping them escape. And you're the one doing it, Tom, Gary. You guys are the ones that are giving them this window to escape just for a little bit. I'm not saying put your head in the sand and not care about the world or whatever. I'm just saying everybody needs a break. And this is what art and story can do for people. So uh, an optional thing about what I'm saying here about, you know, you're going to do all these things live is you could bring a team live. You could, it, uh, you know, Alicia and I worked together on Godchild. She was the writer, but we use the Marvel method. I, I forgot to mention that, what that is. You Do you want to explain the Marvel method as you know it, Alicia? Oh, <laughs> they, they say comics-y type stuff and they're going to go like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. You know so it's talking. Yeah. the way that we worked was, you know, you would give me the general plot and then I would kind of think about it for a few days and I would come back to you with my crazy ideas. And then we would kind of type those out, just rough notes, yeah. uh, but nobody really had any lines. There, there were no words for the characters to say, because I, I needed to see their faces as you drew them before I really knew exactly what they were going to say. Um, we would have definitely had to structure that work different. Cause I remember, you know, I'd call you in the car, like on my way <laughs> to the office and say, um, yeah, I think like Kurt's going to kill everybody and burn the building. Uh, but I think that your live reaction you know, I, I, that I, I'm sure that most of you haven't seen that project at all. Um, but it right. had a really like Tarantino vibe to it. So it was just kind of really over the top. And I think especially with a project like that, where everything is so extra, um, <laughs> I would have loved to have captured right. the expressions on your face <laughs> when I would tell yeah. you like the crazy shit I wanted you to draw. Right. Yeah. I mean, imagine that right now doing that together, it would have been a, a magic moment. Like maybe you're even like, Hey, I'm not going to say something to you till on the stream tonight. Oh Just no, I wouldn't have here. told you anything. I, yeah. I wouldn't have told you anything until right. the, the stream. Yeah. And we really cared about those characters. So we were like, damn, should we do that? Like, yeah, oh, it was grueling for I'm me like, to draw. No, we're going to, we're going to burn her alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was dark. It was like, dang, dang. Um, but you married me anyway. So right. I guess <laughs> maybe that's why. Uh, so, so yeah, imagine that dynamic. So if you have a writer friend or whatever, so if you're a writer out there listening to this, and you're like, dang, I can't draw. Well, <laughs> you can find an artist that, that's willing to do this. If you're, if you're networking, I think, but it's also going to take an artist that wants to do this. What I'm saying, and it's not easy. I get that. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the Marvel method is pretty much plot first. Hey, we're doing it right now. Like, this is how, like, they, they call it the Marvel method because this is what they would do. They'd sit around and they'd go, Stan Lee would say, 
you know, Spider-Man's being crushed by a big pipe, uh, Dr. Doom, da, 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 right? And he would just give that, just throw that out in a talk, maybe even like a little synopsis to Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby would go away on the weekends, draw it out. Uh, Jack Kirby would draw out the entire issue, even with his little notes on it, like what he thinks the characters are saying. He would hand that back to Stan Lee. Stan Lee would go do his whoo, Stan Leeing, you know, and uh, and then there you go. That's where we are right now. The the entire pop culture phenomenon was built on the house that those guys built, right? I can't believe I'm even given that. I said those guys. What's you wrong? did. You, right. You're growing. You're right. growing. I'm as growing. <laughs> I'm growing. Um, but that's the Marvel method. And the, the reason I bring this back up is because Larry Hama, uh, and I thought I was looking for the quote, but over on his, um, over on his, uh, Facebook page, he posted last week or the week before that the death of the Marvel method in comics is what in the actual comic books writing is what made comics suck. The sales went down. There was no, cause there's something about using your imagination and not knowing what's next when you're creating it, that makes it magic. It can't be panel one, panel two, blah, 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 blah. I'll give it to an artist to figure out. It's boring. You got to let the artist and the visual storyteller just be like, check out this bananas thing I drew, Alicia. And then she could go, hey, I think you need to tone it down. Or like, There's editorial and stuff like that, you know. Um, but that's what made comics exciting. And you can still do that with your own stuff, right? But the publishers have really tanked on that. They put this too much process, too much. So we need to get back to that raw creativity and yeah, live streaming is definitely one way uh, to do that. Um, and you might be saying to yourself, DJ, I have no idea how to live stream. Well, guess what? You are going to document that process. If you don't know how to live stream and you have an Instagram, you're going to be like, hey, guys, I'm going to try to learn how to live stream my art. This is the first time I'm doing it. Someone that's with you from the start and is watching your journey. And by the way, it might also be another member of the Draw or Die Club. You can join Draw or Die Club at the uh, scrolling banner at the bottom here, drawordie.club. We've got daily drawing prompts, weekly inspiration. You can become a supporting member with a paid subscri subscription to those daily emails. That helps this uh, uh, this help this helps this channel. It helps motivate me, and it helps me make write write out all of those daily uh, drawing prompts every day. So do that, even if you're not going to draw it. Just you can just get the emails and support the channel, um, and uh, yeah, draw every day, right? So yeah, you're going to document your process as much as possible. It's kind of what I'm doing right now. In in lieu of me not drawing a comic right now, I'm doing the podcast. I'm doing the newsletters. I'm doing the videos to help more artists because I like to talk about this stuff. It's one of my pillars. Like I like to talk about this innovation and craft because I feel like in a lot of ways, and I don't want to totally crap on creators, but people got lazy. People got lazy and they're just like, I just want to do the one thing and then not do the thing anymore. I'm not a business person. I just don't want to think about it. I don't want to build a social thing. Someone else take care of that for me. Well, they're going to take care of it for you. They're going to take care of all of it for you. And then when it comes to be payday, you're not going to get paid. You're going to be that guy on the screen, the other screen that was uh, whatever. So always think I should be documenting this. I, I need to do this more too. I get lazy as well, where I'm just like, and it's fine sometimes guys, but I'll, I'll take my iPad to the couch and I'll sit down and I'll be like, I'm going to color this thing. And then I'm like, in the back of my head now, I'm like, well, you know, I'm just sitting on the couch. I could be turning on the live stream here and coloring it live. And I felt like I was even more productive, honestly, when I did those old work, those deep work streams that are on my channel. They're like a six hour stream of me just sitting there working on a comic page and people would come in and out and, and talk and chat. Um, but mostly it was me just doing the deep work of the comics. I don't even think that you need to work on that. So let's talk about schedule. Uh, you don't need to do six hour streams. You could do one hour a night. We're 44 minutes into this podcast. We're going to wrap up at about an hour. It's what we usually do. Um, but schedule, 
is the best that you can do. But the rule is stay consistent. We've been consistent with this podcast for 12 weeks. This is podcast number 12. I've been consistent with the Draw or Die Club newsletter for 40 something weeks. I don't know what it is now, 42 or 43. I'm losing track, but every week you know that I'm there. You know that we're going to be here. Wednesdays, I've been doing the, you know, this YouTube, this YouTube game takes consistency to be in. But live streaming, I'm finding, is way more easier than actually setting up a thing, doing a script, and doing like the, the, the art print video. That takes a little more of my time to do, but I do feel like it's valuable to do those. But I actually feel like this, we get more value out of conversation like this and, and getting behind the scenes a little bit. And it's um, not easy. I, I think not. that it's important to point out that there's, there's a lot of days that you do not want to do this. That's right. Um, yeah. But we keep going and, and it always feels like after it's like going to the gym, you know, it's just a different muscle yeah. that you're exercising. So like, you don't want to draw every day, like just draw, right. draw it. But now we're adding the caveat of, of point your camera at it. Yeah. And, or and talk, talk to your people. It's, it always feels fine when you're done. It's just getting there is hard. It's hard sometimes. Right. And listen, I don't, I don't want to work out. I'm not going to the gym. But I will draw every day. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I talked about that, you know, tough couple of weeks for me personally. There was two days or three days last week where I just, I could not, I just wasn't in the mood. Like, it just felt like all creativity was zapped from me. But if I knew that there's an audience waiting for me, not, not the pressure part, because I didn't like that. I don't like the idea of having a Patreon where you're like, if you're if you're dreading doing it, then you need to do something else, right? If you're like, damn, I don't want to get on with... Um, I don't want to get on. I don't want to make something for my, then you're not, you're not doing the right story. You're not doing something that's not vibing with you and your, and what you want to do. So you need to reconfigure that because deep down you want to do something, right? But it's just not quite the right thing yet. So the pillars thing that I talk about, make sure that you're figuring out your pillars. I know what my pillars are. Here we are. This is one of my pillars. I like to talk to other artists about this stuff. Um, there's Barry. Hey, Barry, I haven't seen you in a while. Says he's been sapped for weeks. Yep, it happens. It happens. So Barry was in the... Uh, Barry, we're talking about the four-panel um, thing and all that stuff. Um, Gord says, I appreciate the transparency on your channel about how creativity works in people's head. Yeah, no, no doubt. <laughs> uh, there's so many... I was telling Alicia the other day, I'm like, I deal with a lot of creators... In other in my other work and people aren't really authentic they put on masks because they want you to see the pretty side of social media and success and they don't want to talk about the other stuff the burnout and things like that and i think it's important that we do that especially artists because we got it up against us artists Something really i was thinking about today in that vein is that when you do a project like this and you're consistent and you're making your own way and it's not attached to a publisher and it's not attached to your day job. Um, and, and I'm trying to find my way myself in this is that I think that as people, we have a tendency to kind of tie our identities to our work. Um, and for me, that's always meant like my, my job, like the, the place that pays me. And when I was, um, DJ, you and I talked about this a lot when I was a distiller and you said, you know, go all in on that. You know, you could document, you could, you could talk about that. Um, but that was something I was doing for someone else and they had the ability to take that away. And then who would I be if that got taken away? And ultimately it did, um, go away. Um, but I think with your art and your comics and your creations that you make on your own, that's an identity that you get to keep and you can tie your self-worth to it um, and not worry that one day you're going to wake up and it's going to be gone. So I think it's so powerful as a personal, like a, I am, what am I? Who am I? And you can really carve out an identity of who you are that isn't tied to someone who can lay you off or move on from you. I think that's, that's such a 
powerful thing to build for yourself. Just really not in a selfish way, but as a self-sustaining way. Yeah, this is a really bad Stan Lee that I just drew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a better Jack Kirby, though. That's a, better, that's a little better, better, better Jack. Um, yeah, I think that... Uh, yeah, I, I definitely feel that sometimes whenever creators are not putting on, they're putting on the, the, the show. And then you talk to them behind the scenes and it's like, it's really bad, dude. And it's like, oh, I wish I could, I wish I could say something, you know, I wish I could, I wish I could get more people to talk about it, but I understand because they don't want to burn bridges and things like that. And I will respect all of that because I don't want to burn the bridges for them. I don't want to be like, DJ's burning the bridges. Um, uh, not doing that. I think forget the publishers, forget all of that, forget corporations. You, the creator, have the tools in your hand to do exactly all of these things. Document your process, develop your little four panel comic strip. Yes, your story and art need to be compelling. You might've been doing it for a long time and maybe it's not hitting. You gotta develop it, develop it online. Document your process, learn how to live stream, learn how to use these tools just from your cell phone, right? You got it. We'll help you. We'll, we'll do some more of that workshopping. I'll sh maybe show you a little bit behind the scenes about how I'm doing it. You don't need fancy equipment to do it, but here's the wins guys. Cause we're going to get into, we're going to get into like, how do you make money with this? How do you do all that? Here's the quick wins for all this with this way of building live. You're going to, um, uh, Wait, let's see here. How does talking about struggles burn bridges? Does it expose us? Well, yes. <laughs> so uh, I could give you I think quite... The, I think the struggle isn't so much the internal struggle that we're not talking about it. It's the publisher that doesn't pay you struggle <laughs> or the editor that cens censors your art struggle. The, those are the ones that kind of burn up those bridges. The 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 answer that i'd have to that quote is one time i was sitting with a will it really well-known editor of a will really well-known comic publisher and i'm really like it's on the tip of my tongue i just want to say his name it starts with a c that's all i'm going to say his last name starts with an r but we're sitting there and i was like i want to work on a certain project i'm not going to say that project either but it starts with a g and there was an opportunity to work on that project and I was excited and I had some buzz going on for hero by night. And I'm like, I got to work on my dream project. And the guy told me you're dangerous because you're honest. And I was like, what did that mean? Like it made me feel weird. And it was because they were afraid that if they worked with me and the checks didn't come in the mail, DJ might explode or DJ might expose them, right? So integrity, ethics, all that stuff is important to me. I've calmed down. I've been, see, I'm being respectful. I'm not saying names or I'm not just bomb blasting people. I understand I'm way more mature now. I don't want to affect other people's stuff. It's business. But yes, just a little thing like that. Lashing out online. Greg Capullo had the same problem for a long time. He used to be a real fiery dude on the internet and he didn't have work for years. And Todd McFarlane gave him uh, the spawn gig. And then he just learned to zen himself out a little bit. Right. And I learned from him because he was one of my, I think, you know, silent mentors. Watching him kind of just go ape shit and then go like, no, I need to be a professional and center myself. So, yeah, um, I know a lot of things about my friends that are struggling in, in the art world. And it's frustrating to me because I'm like, dude, you guys have more talent in your pinky finger. You can go do this and have and build millions. So yeah, we're going to talk about, we're going to get back right into this story here. The wins. You do this, you're going to build community on some other level. You're going to be building true fans faster than you ever did with your mini comic or your comics that shows or hustling around. You're going to do it. They're going to feel more connected to you and they're going to feel like they were there with you on that journey. Okay. Um, it's a content machine. Putting out a stream like that, you're firing, I say it, you're firing one arrow and you're hitting many targets. That's what I say at work. I say that in my other jobs, in the whatever whatever it is I do. 
what do I do, Alicia? Marketing, storytelling, branding, crazy stuff. I help build millions of dollar brands in my day job. You know? I know what the fuck I'm talking about is what I'm saying. So fire one arrow, you hit many targets. You get on that live stream, you go, it's all a numbers game. All of it. And for you too. So the corporations, it's a numbers game because if you don't have enough numbers, you're out. We're going to go to the next guy. Jason Pearson, get out of here. Right? We got the young hotness coming in. But you need more at-bats. And uh, I don't want to say that. Look, I've spoiled the you're going to die one day thing. Uh, And you might not be there yet. You might not be there yet. Your art might not be there yet. Your story might not be there yet. You need to work on that and put the work in. And you can do that live and build your audience as you're doing it. That's the whole idea here tonight. This is the future. And by the way, it's not that nobody's not doing this. We just don't know who they are. They're on TikTok right now, doing it live on TikTok. We don't know their names. There's 20-year-old kids. I've seen them. I don't even know who they are. I'm like, whoa, look at this kid. I'm stopping when I'm going through TikTok. Us old guys are like, all right, I want to be on TikTok. You got to open your mind because that's where the people are. That's where the eyeballs and the attention are. If you go back, you've if you're just jumping into this podcast now, you need to go back and watch the beginning of this. So we talk about the 1920s where the attention was, right? I'm not going to rehash that. But but just from that, fire one arrow, hit many targets. You got your four panel comic storytelling. What is that? What is that? Why do I go there? Because yes, look at the most famous comics of all time. We're not graphic novels and long form comics. They were four panel adventure strips, four panel romance strips, four panel boxing strips, genres that were defined in American comics, not manga, but what's the most famous. Okay. So yeah, I say you get one, you get your comic. You're putting that on TikTok, swipeable panels. You could do that on TikTok. Right now. And that Instagram. matches up with the attention span there. Four panels. Four panels. About 15 seconds. That's about how much time you have. Right. You have things like Webtoon, but here's the thing. I had an experience with Webtoon where I felt like there was some censorship there. I was drawing a girl. and I don't draw over-sexualized women or anything like that. And my, my strip got taken down. And so I started to feel like it was gatekeeping. Then now we're back to that thing I talked about, the syndicates the brands controlling the artists or what they want to be seen and how they want it to, to show. They want to curate things. Even when they say it's a free platform, you don't own that land. They can do whatever they want to it. Right? So you got to have, you got to diversify what you're doing when you own that audience. It's a numbers game guys. Um, I'll maybe link to a thing about um, the comedian, very popular comedian right now has a channel on uh, YouTube called flagrant Two. Oh, if anyone knows it, just put it, put their name in the, uh, uh shoot. It's not coming. Schultz Schultz. His last name is Schultz. It'll come to me anyways. Uh, Andrew Schultz, Andrew Schultz. Yes. He has a whole interview with Colin and Samir about this, but it's on the comedy strip, uh, or comedy, uh, club, uh, game, but it, it's very similar to comic strip artists, what he's done and nobody in comics is doing it yet. Um, so yeah, from that one strip, you can do the TikTok. you can get your print collection and think manga size. Okay. It's the number one selling format in the world right now. When you go to the, see those little one piece books, and when you really look at them and open them up, it's about the equivalent of a four panel uh, comic strip in there. It's pretty fascinating. Top selling books, right? Now, later on, you can have a fan club or something like that, but don't even think about that. Don't launch a comic like, and I've done this. Like you launch a comic, you're a couple months in and you're like, hey, $5 fan club, let's get in here. And then you got 14 people and then you feel the pressure. Like I got to get, I got to, I got to please these 14 people on Patreon. Um, It's a sucky feeling when you're not feeling it. Right. Um, But after all of that, you also have your, I'm just putting the YouTube in. I'm saying do this on YouTube. Okay. Um, if you can, you can do it on it, TikTok and whatever, but TikTok, you know, there, you never know YouTube. I, I would bet on YouTube over anything, but as you're going, you're building this IP 
and this is where Andrew Schultz come in. Okay. He put out a special because he was just a comedian, stand-up comedian in New York. He put out his own special on um, uh, YouTube where it was like, net, it wasn't Netflix special. It was just called uh, YouTube something. Like he didn't call it a special either. He, he didn't want to be like special about it. He was like, this is a night of me going to three comedy clubs in one night. It got over 2 million views on YouTube. That numbers game made people go, who is this guy? Where did it happen? Right here on YouTube. Think about that. Now, suddenly, Netflix is knocking and saying to him, hey, you want to do a Netflix special? And he said, I did it not to do the Netflix special because more people watched my YouTube special than they did my Netflix special. He wants to give away everything for free. But he did the Netflix special only because of the, um, what do you call it, Alicia? Social. Clout. Clout. Social proof. Right? Like, hey, I'm on Netflix too. Yeah, 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 yeah. People do that with comics. Think about it. They go, yeah, I did some shit for Marvel, right? I worked on The Walking Dead shit. Like, like, and then they go do their own thing, right? It's the same thing in every music as well. I did that commercial. I, uh, my music was in this radio thing or whatever. Um, but comic cartoonists aren't doing it. We're just kind of sitting around waiting for someone to come and, 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 and help us with that. But it's a numbers game. And when you get those numbers, then yeah. People are going to come knocking. Believe me, they will come knocking. And they'll want you to sign contracts and they'll want exclusive deals. And they'll want to go back to what I said on the screen previously, where the syndicates, the corporations, they want to, they, oh, this guy's hot. We're going to wrap this up and control this. You don't need to do that anymore. We need to stop thinking like that. There is no great savior that's going to come and help artists. You got to help yourself and you got to do it yourself and build your own thing. And your art, your, your member, your viewers are not other artists, maybe a, a few, but that's not your audience. If you're out there just showing your comic to other comic artists, you're doomed. It's a doom, it's doomsday. Cause if you're hoping for a Hollywood deal or something like that, it might find you, but you need the more at bats and you should try to control what you're doing with it. Right. Um, and again, you might not be there yet, but that's okay. It's actually a good thing. If you're watching this and you're like, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet for this. I can't do this yet until I have this until tomorrow. And that's why I wrote, you're going to die one day. It could be tomorrow. You know, yeah, there are, yeah, you're going to die one day. Spoiler alert. So you got to get cracking on this talking to another guy or, or listening to another guy actually that was like, go to any nursing home and go talk to 80 year olds and look in their eyes and you'll see a lot of regret. I talked to my dad who's in his, you know, old biker dude, whatever. He's full of so much regret. All these old guys, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows an old guy that's like regretful of whatever. And they didn't do that thing that they did. So you got this skill inside of you. Get out here and start documenting what you're doing. That's the recipe. That's where we are right now. It's 2023. You need to do it. I'm getting invited. You know, I get invited to things now that I never would have thought of. I always thought of Comic Cons, and now there's these things called VidCon. And I mean, there's always been VidCon. I sound like a, you know, boomer or something. But you know, uh, I'm able to go out and talk to people that I never would have talked to before. Like I never would have thought to talk to YouTubers about their creation stuff. Roberto Blake. Uh, Daniel Batal, a lot of those people have become my friends and it's empowerment of your creator, you as a creator, whether you're a writer or an artist, you can get on here and do something different, right? Um, there, as Tom says, doing it live also allows you to promote the stuff that you're doing every day. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on over on the Kayfabe channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe, but my, my good friend, uh, uh, Jim Rugg, and Ed Pisker are over there on Cartoonist Kayfabe. They've started bringing back their weekly shoot where they talk about comic news and stuff like that, mostly comic industry stuff. And um, they do the same thing. They get to talk about the books that they're selling. Because I said, like, hey, hey, guys, what are you doing with your retention value? On? I'm talking like YouTube stuff to, to Jim. And he's like, I don't, we don't mess with the end cards and stuff. And I'm like, you need an end card strategy. 
you need like <laughs> I'm like going deep on this YouTube thing. And he's like, we make we make money selling our books. They're cartoonists. It's cartoonist kayfabe, but it's so deep into into the weeds of what they're doing. And now they're they're going live on their Patreon. As think about this, they're pointing a camera at themselves on the side as they're filming their shoots for the week, and they do seven days a week. They got a video coming out on the cartoonist kayfabe channel. Some really obscure stuff, looking at cool comics and stuff. It's great if you're into comics and like that. Uh, talking about art, those dudes go really, really deep. Um, I'd like to have them on at some point, maybe. I'm sure we could get Jim on. Ed's kind of always working. Ed's like a maniac working on his stuff. But, but yeah, they're doing it. Like these guys are the guys I'm talking about. They're already kind of out there, kind of doing it. But they're stuck in that old game, and I, I think they know that they're, they're stuck in that game too, where they're like, "We need to do something different." But they're they're experimenting and they're out there doing it and they're documenting their process. And they started their channel with not anything fancy. <laughs> they still don't have a lot of big fancy equipment or anything like that. It's just you know them documenting what they're doing and and showing what they're passionate about. Yeah. So if you've been digging this, this is the recipe. Um, Come back and watch it again. I'm not going to share it anywhere. Um, my, my, my watch says I need to stand up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no watch. I don't uh, know. You, you could probably go a little deeper on this. Maybe a, maybe leave a comment if you want kind of a more defined process on this. And uh, Hey, we didn't do the emoji or anything. Did we? We didn't. No. You don't care next to do time that? i want to do the the meme right. thing but this this was this i feel like this was a very serious yeah guys fireside dj chat the fireside yeah the fireside the fireside indeed um guys we got to step it up i got to step it up you know I, i'm going to show you I, i've been working on a personal project if you stuck around this long this is a personal these are very personal stories from my life, you know, my first memories, my mom in the yard, uh, I'm in the window looking down. That's one of my first memories. I'm talking about what is your first memory you can remember? That's one of my first memories is looking out the window at my dad going, you're going to burn the neighborhood down woman, you know? And my mom's in like some witch robe or some shit. And like, right. Like I'm, I'm doing these out for a different, whole different thing. And I haven't shown anybody any of this. Alicia's seen a little bit of it. She hasn't even seen any of this, but here I am, you know, when I'm drawing this, like my mom tried to put a curse on a, a local pizza uh, restaurant owner. That's a good, that's a good story, right? You want to hear more about that, but I've got the entire thing here since, especially since I draw on the uh, iPad, I could have been documenting all of this live. I've got it all. I've got everything documented. It's just sitting here on the iPad and I've, I haven't told anybody or shown anybody. I've been afraid to show it. Okay. And, um, but it's really good. Like, I like it. Like my family is probably going to hate me, but most of them are dead. Um, so it's, it's okay. Um, but they're good stories. So when I tell these stories in private, I have friends that go, you should make these into things. And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I can't talk about that, you know? But like, yeah, I got the whole colors, pencils, everything in this for about two, um, two episodes worth. Uh, here's where my mom and dad met, right? In a bar that we still go to, uh, to have some pizza and stuff. And I actually made this on purpose as like, is he really looking at my mom or is it the Stoney's sign? Is he really in love with the Stoney's sign? Because he really loved Stoney's beer. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is like, this is not a comic, but it's storytelling and I'm drawing these stories out and it's very personal and I might start doing what I'm talking about doing here with this, with that, because I'm like, what am I doing? I'm sitting there on the couch, not showing what I'm the process that I'm working on. I'm wasting this time. I think um, we need a couch rig because you, you, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> You can't spend every waking moment at your desk. No, I know. I don't like to be in this room too much. After I need like a, a boom mic. I don't need for, Like some people have that lamp that like comes over the top of the no. couch. I'm yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I'm picturing Maybe your mom walking is- in and visiting <laughs> one day. <laughs> It'd be like, what the crap is over their couch right now? Oh, DJ's live streaming right now. You know, no, um, no, yeah, but I mean, then, I, no, no, no. Like, I see a whole thing now. Like, oh this gosh. is a project management gig, uh, <laughs> and then the the people are characters. Like, it's about your art, but it's all, also a sitcom. <laughs> right. I got this. So got the this. dog is like bothering me and all that, right? Constantly. Yeah, constantly. And the cat is biting you. The cat's biting my legs. So it's just a slice of life watching really behind the scenes of what I'm dealing with my day to day while I'm trying yeah. to create. Okay. Great. Well, hey, everybody. If you're listening to this and you like me, you don't like me, because I know there's probably some people that saw this and were like, what's DJ going to talk about tonight? I'm going to listen to what that guy's saying. Because I know, I know you're out there. I know who you are. But that's okay. I'm here for you too. Subscribe to the channel. Like it share it comment if you want to be on the show in the future let us know we've we've, we're going to do that in the future Uh, but maybe we do some uh in-depth um maybe we do some in-depth workshops on what it means for good story and stuff like that for the craft it's not always about money um uh so uh yeah i try to post on my instagram more i think i'm more on instagram than i am any anything else so check us out on instagram and drawardie.club you know that's weekly coming out on sundays i usually do a recap of everything we talked about if there's any highlights on here uh thanks again to opus i forgot to mention we didn't use any of the fun features like emoji rain or anything like that we can do that next time but um uh, they let me uh, check out their streaming app and uh, they're sponsoring some of the uh, 28 day drawing that's coming up so 28 days in february i will be here every night at 8 p.m drawing the drawing prompt for the day and maybe i'll stick around and that's it that is my warm-up i do the drawing prompts as my warm-up and then i'll bust into some of that stuff uh some of that uh more private stuff if you want to check that out make sure you're subscribed and if you're digging it and you're excited about it share it with other people share it with other artists that you might know um and i wish you all the best i hope you stay encouraged out there alicia did i miss anything no Great. Everybody, we'll see you soon. Um, we're out. We have no outro music in this. We got an opus. You got to get some. Uh, you gotta no, get some... I, we're going to do an intro outro video. That's, yeah. Is that what we're going to do? Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. And uh, stay encouraged out there. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Go draw some stuff. God dang it. Start documenting your process. See you guys soon.